Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another video. I hope you're all having a wonderful festive season and over the last few days there's been so much Star Wars news. I've covered it every single day so if you've missed any of those I do recommend you go back and check those out. So just before we dive into the Luthan theory I will say we're now just over a week away from the Bad Batch season 2 and Disney Plus have been releasing official promo images and here's the one of Omega in her new outfit sporting as always her energy bow. She looks so badass and as I say if you on the latest information on the show, go and check out the video I posted on Christmas Day. But with that said, my dear friends, no more jibber jabber, let's dive straight into this. Today we're going to explore a theory that is semi-light-hearted, but as you'll see, does have some weight to it. Given that it's the holiday season, it only makes sense we talk about the infamous Star Wars holiday special. Love it or hate it, the fandom still talks about it 44 years later. Despite its clunkiness and at times difficult to sit through nature, there are some common themes with Andor, notably Leia's speech at the end. Now despite it not being a canon Star Wars film, there was one character in it who really caught my attention this time round. This time I rewatched it, I paid attention to her back background character I didn't really focus on in the past, Sorn Dan. I am absolutely convinced they could retcon this character to be Luthan Rail. He not only looks like someone they base Luthan on, but his backstory as a trader, an ally to the Wookiees, and a secret rebel spy has me wondering if this is something Lucasfilm will retcon to be the same character, just as they did with Captain Rex of the Battle of Endor. Now I will say guys, this is kind of two theories in one. On the one hand, I'm saying he might be Luthan, but on the other, he might just be someone related to Luthan, because they do have similarities, but also striking differences. Accents, the way they talk, the hairstyle, mannerisms, that kind of thing, there are differences. So I'm not saying it's definitely Luthan, but I do think there could be a connection there, maybe someone he's related to. But first of all, I do want to explore the theory that this could be Luthan. Again, take it with a pinch of salt, it's just some lighthearted fun, and I do think there are things that are convincing, so let's dive into this. Let's break down all the evidence that Sorn Dan is really Luthan Rail. Let's begin with their professions. We know nothing about either's backstory, but one is a secret rebel on Kashyyyk, and one is a rebel who has an outward-facing persona as an art stealer on Coruscant, and you can see how the two have so many similarities. The holiday special takes place in 1 ABY, one year after the events of Rogue One and A New Hope. Andor Season 1 takes place a few years earlier, in 5 BBY. If Luthan survives the scope of the Andor show, he might have gone to Kashyyyk, and there is evidence in the Disney Plus show, if you want to look at it that way, that he does have a connection to the Wookiee homeworld. For one thing, all of the Wookiee armor, shields, helmets, you name it, Luthan's gallery was littered with artifacts from Kashyyyk during the time of Revenge of the Sith. During the events of Rogue One, he might have decided to lay low on Kashyyyk, and presenting as a trader might be easier than on Coruscant at that time. The timeline of events adds up, and vague unspecified ages do seem to match up quite a bit, just based on appearance alone. Not to mention similar interests in collectibles from around the galaxy, and also being a secret rebel spy. And this brings us on to point number three. His character description on Wikipedia is almost word for word what you might expect from Luthan. They say, quote, he was also secretly a member of the Rebel Alliance, who maintained his own network of connections. This is the huge bit. In the first season of Andor, Luthan's biggest role was maintaining and managing his inner circle of rebels, his connections, and wide array of spies. For all we know, the names Luthan and Sorn Dan are both just pseudonyms. Whenever he moves location, he just takes on a new name. But another huge bit of evidence is that both characters run shops as a public-facing front, and I want to investigate this with you a little bit further. During the Life Day holiday of 1 ABY, when the Empire blockaded Kashyyyk and declared martial law in the world, an Imperial guard wandered into Dan's shop. This Imperial stole a groomer, and Sorn Dan was not happy, so he makes his way to the home of his Wookiee friend Chewie, who's not yet arrived home for the holiday, and whose family was worried about his absence. After Dan assuaged the Wookiee's fears and gave them all Life Day gifts, he reassured Leia, speaking to them via wall screen, that the family would be safe. However, an Imperial search party entered the home on the hunts for ties to the rebels. Dan nervously attempted to prevent the Imperials from discovering that Chewie, a well-known Alliance hero, was one of the home's residents, but the search party's commander ordered him to leave. Dan later returned and found that a recently arrived Chewie had eliminated a stormtrooper who'd been left to guard the home, and the trader Sorn Dan used the family's wall screen to convince the suspicious Imperial that the trooper left his post. So as you can see throughout, this guy is just as sneaky and tactical as Luthan is. I wouldn't be surprised if they wreck 
upon this to be the same guy, or at the very least, a relative. And the way Sondan thought on his feet had a very composed outward facing persona, all ring to me as Luthan traits. Now, for this theory to work, we have to look past the accent, which of course is going to be different in retrospect, but I do think the connection there is very apparent. I wonder if someone like Pablo Hidalgo, who was in charge of the lore on the Andal series, had this character in mind when they created Luthan, even just vaguely. For me, it's about the network of connections, the situation with him being a spy for the Rebel Alliance, then you factor in the way he conceals his identity, the fact he's a trader, a collector of art, these things do match up. Now, I've explored a few Luthan theories in the past, but this one has definitely been the most fun to speculate about. It's not reliant on Force user theories like Jedi or Sith, but the big question, do I believe it? I put forward the theory, but do I think it's true? Honestly, I'm iffy, 50-50. I'm much more inclined to believe he might have been a cousin or relative, but not Luthan himself, maybe even someone part of the inner circle, because Sorndan is nowhere near as intense as Luthan is, although this can easily be explained by masking his true colours, as he often does in Andor. Stellan Skarsgård's performance in Andor Season 1 was absolutely phenomenal, and I so often find myself thinking about his speech. Related or not, I'm going to stick with my previous theory that Luthen is someone who knows Palpatine's biggest secret, that he's a Sith Lord. A Sith Lord? If you missed that video, click the link on the screen now. But there is something fundamentally interesting if Luthen ends up being someone who's not related in any way to any of the big Force users, Jedi or Sith. I've explored the possibility of him being related to the likes of Jocasta Nu, also being related to Palpatine in some ways, but if he is a nobody, that'd be even more interesting, because as Diego Luna said recently, this show is about the nobodies. This is the show about the average people rising up, fighting oppression, and coming to the realisation they can do more than what they think they're capable of, they can be bigger than themselves. And Luthen, as mysterious as he is, as many artifacts as he has, he's still just a person, and him not being related in any way to those could be really interesting going into season 2, because it does lower the expectation of some kind of big cameo, and we can just focus on him as an amazing character. And ironically, that makes him more similar to Sorn Dan. But you know what, guys? I'm gonna stick a pin in that, because I really don't know what to think at this stage. I do think there's more to Luthen and his backstory, and I still believe he has a personal involvement investment in this fight, something that is beyond just fighting the Imperial regime, I do think he knew somebody who knew Palpatine, and I think I'm gonna stick by my theory that somehow he knows the Empire is really being run by a Sith Lord, not just a crazy politician from Naboo. But what do you guys think? Share your thoughts in the comments down below of this theory and everything we spoke about in today's video. Who do you think Luthen is? Do you want to find out in season 2? Or do you think it should just be a mystery? If you enjoyed this one, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. May the Force be with you always. This holiday is yours, but we all share with you the hope that this day brings us closer to freedom and to harmony and to peace. No matter how different we appear, we're all the same in our struggle against the powers of evil and darkness. I hope that this day will always be a day of joy in which we can reconfirm our dedication and our courage, and more than anything else, our love for one another.